Hello YouTube, back to the next BattleBots review, and today I've got the Vex Robotics Bite Force Kit, and it's a massive kit. This has got to be at least, uh, oh, about twice the size of the reg- of, uh, at least the smaller kits. I'm not sure by comparison for the regular kits, and maybe, oh, gosh, I'm not really sure, maybe a quarter size bigger? It's not a whole lot bigger, but the kit is a very accurate representation of Bite Force. You can tell it's got the four-wheel drive. Unfortunately, it cannot drive inverted, and the main reason for that is, in the back, these wheels are not powered. You can see that wheel spins freely. It's not connected to any motors, and just for a little added bonus, here's the underside to show you. These are the two motors that actually power the bot. So it's a two-wheel drive robot, even though it's got four wheels as a whole. Unfortunately, that makes it kind of almost less superior to the uh, regular Hexbug toy, which is capable of driving inverted. You can see I've got this the uh, main receiver hanging off here. This is... Uh, this just makes it easier to change batteries and, you know, stuff like that, access all the wires. Because it is a pain. You're actually fitting it under here. Yeah, that uh, white piece down here, see if I can tip it here. Let's see. Yeah, you see that white piece inside there? That's where this guy has to fit. It's a very, ter very tight space. So, yeah, there's a little peg sticking up there. There's a couple wires, yeah, right in there, that are kind of, uh, that's kind of why I have it in this position. I don't know have it a little bit more, uh, sort of beached up top there, to kind of keep it somewhat secure. But, I have to say, this is a fantastic kit. I mean, the detail, I mean, this is, yeah, these are all, like, there's, like, ten pieces just devoted to just the weapon. It really gives you a sense of mass. And, of course, this is the other problem. This is, like, further evidence as to why this cannot drive inverted. These are not very strong at all. Like, any amount of weight will uh, probably cause them to... They're a little wobbly. They're not... Weapons a little, is pretty close to the edge. There's probably maybe not even a, an inch to spare between that. But a nice little feature is that when you're building the kit, these are actually uh, kind of hinged. They're, they're mocking Bite Force's actual hinged wedges. And they do sit on the ground, although, good luck getting underneath anything. I don't think you're going to be able to, be able to do that. But there's a nice amount of detail. All the sponsors are on each head, and these are all, these are all like, you know, flexible little plastic here. This is, like, very thin, uh, sort of plastic. And, of course, that's another thing. That's the other problem. Of course, I guess for display, if you're never actually going to use it, that's fine. You can put all the little uh, rivets along here. Keep the receiver in and never bother with it. But it is unfortunate they didn't leave it like an actual like hole where this could sit a little more firmly. So then you could put the armor in and then take it out as you feel you needed to. You kind of have to do it manually yourself. Because these are a literal pain to get out if you need to get them out. But this is a fantastic kit. Here's a view from the side. There's a lot of detail. I mean, all the weapon mount is here. I think you've got the chain guard over here. Even though the chain is actually pretty deep inside. Let's see if I can get a good shot of it from here. I don't know if I can. You saw a little bit of the chain previously. It's pretty dark in there. Let's see. I can't really... Yeah, the chain is over here. So it's really difficult to see, but it runs all the way down, connects to the, uh, yeah. Okay, I think that's the best shot I can probably give you from here. But there's a big old motor down here that actually powers the weapon. I don't think I can show that even that well here. Oh, there it is. Yeah, this guy down here, there's a little bar here. That'll give you your first clue. So this guy sits here. That's where the motor is so that powers this guy. But it's fantastic. This drives... There's a good amount of spin to it. As I said, it's probably about 500 RPM, so it's about the same uh, amount of spin as the uh, as the other BattleBots hex bugs. And just for scale, here's the end game kit. I could have used Tombs or uh, Bite for or uh, uh, Warhead. Well, Warhead's a little trickier to compare. It's a lot narrower. End game's a little more compact. So this really gives you a sense of scale. This is, uh, I'd say, about. Oh, maybe I'm approaching twice the size of the Endgame kit, to some extent. I mean, if you put it sideways, it may register a little bit better. It's a pretty sizable kit, let me tell you. It's it's not really a whole lot heavier, though, but 
mean, it's a lot smaller than I thought it was going to be. I mean, I thought this was going to be like a massive kit. But, you know, it was actually, I can actually hold it in my hands pretty well. It's, uh, really gives a sense of scale. So, uh, without further ado, I guess I'm going to fire up the, uh, oh, and uh, before I point out, this came with the uh, kit as well. This will give you some idea of what it looks like when you're done. Outside of, uh, you know, what I've already shown you. That's, this is, ac this is and this is also got the details on the, uh, you know, you know, weapon speed and all that, like the other, like the Endgame and uh, Warhead kits. It's not much to it. But I guess uh, without further ado, I'm going to uh, move the camera over and uh, get this fired up. And hopefully I'll be able to show you what this thing can actually do. If you give me a sec here to get set up here. Let's see. Am I going to be okay? Okay. All right. I'm going to start with very basics here. Get my phone on. That's running. I will plug her in. Let's see. You go. Yeah. This is the other problem. You have to kind of force it in a certain direction. Yeah, here it is. Okay. Now hopefully this should, yeah, this should have enough, uh, battery to run. It's just not going to power on until make sure all the wires are in place and stuff like that. Oops, did I put it in the right way? Yeah. Okay. So now, assuming I can get it working, I do have the Vexrobotics app, but I probably won't be able to show you how it all works. Just give me a sec here to get it connected. It's gonna be worth it. It's fantastic. This is a. I'll probably just start with the weapon just to kind of get it going here. It's been sitting for about a week, though it was unplugged, so I presume it should be okay. Ah, there we go. Yep, just to make sure. If I tip it up, you can see the blinking light. That's the good sign. And... See? Switched. There's the weapon. And there's the different speeds. Yeah, it only spins in one direction, unfortunately. But it's the direction you want it to go in anyway. So, yay. I guess there's that. Let me see. I don't know, as I said, I do not know if it has the power to flip. Maybe it does. You know, maybe I'll uh, do that before we... Uh... I'm not sure. I honestly don't know. Yeah, I'm not too sure about that. Yeah, I don't think it can flip. I might do it with Tombstone a little later, but... It does turn. I'm mostly being a little gentle with it. I'm still not, you know, sure how it's all come together. Put it over here. That chain is going pretty fast, so once you get it going, I would probably recommend uh, maybe touching it from the other side, because there's also a gear in here that's asking if it's going to work. There's a good amount, of, you can see there's a good amount of spin to it. 
So it's, yeah, he's looking like he's, uh, you know, kind of charging at you, and I'm going to slow it down here. Now, if you want to stop, you put it completely all the way down. That, that, that also, uh, that stops the weapon. And then if you want to go full speed again, it's pretty cool. This will, uh, this will definitely give you a good idea of, you know, yeah, but definitely make sure, although all the wires can fit properly in the receiver back here, make sure they fit exactly right. Because if you're offing by one, you'll notice it'll be a little more twitchy. It will, it'll move kind of on its own. It'll, you know, you tell it to move forward, it'll move forward, but in a kind of jerky way, kind of like that. It's, or it may be more smooth, but again, you're not commanding it to do that. But yes, I would say, yeah, it's definitely, it, I'd say it's actually faster. It's a little, I'd say it's definitely less safe to, uh, you know, touch the weapon while it's running. Unless it's at a slow speed. But overall, you can see these are touching the floor. I'm going to uh, back it up so you can see that a little more clearly. Go. And as you can see, there it is. Let's we'll drive forward and we'll, uh... Pretty cool, right? So definitely, if you're, you know, you're a fan of B Bite Force, you're a fan of Battle Box, you're a fan of these kits, they're all free, or any combination of those three, I would get, I would definitely recommend getting this kit. This is a lot of fun. It'll take you a while. I'll some sore fingers. I know I had that. But it's a worthwhile kit to put together, let me tell you. So that's my review on the Bite Force kit. Thanks for watching.